Some of you may already know, this is our darling dog, Aveen, and she is an absolute joy. Most of the time, we do have some difficulties loose leash walking. That is a challenge for everybody. And training me is the biggest thing to work on. I am not the only one who walks her, and so we're working on consistency here to make sure that everyone's giving her the same cues, that she's being rewarded for the right behavior, and she knows exactly what to expect. So if loose leash walking is a challenge for you, first, let's check out the type of leash that you're using. This is her traditional leash. You've got your lead. This is a four foot lead. It gives me a good amount of distance from my dog, but not too much. And this is your traditional collar that you can size to the exact width of your dog's neck. This is not a martingale collar. Those are the ones that actually cinch. And it is not a choke collar either. So this is not going to exert any more pressure on her than she is equally putting out herself. It's not cinching anywhere else. So she will just be putting pressure here if she's trying to resist me, which is not that great for her windpipe. It's not healthy. So, and it's also frustrating for whoever's walking her and hard on my shoulder. And that's not what we want. So, especially since I have children that are slowly learning how to walk the dog, they're gonna be learning these cues, but I want to add some extra tools in place just in case she should see something and take off and they're not expecting it. Because they're not gonna notice things as easily as I would as I've been trained all these years. So that's gonna be something that will eventually become more instinctual for them. In the meantime, I wanna have some safeties in place. So let's take a look at some of these tools, what works, I'm gonna pass up the ones that don't, and we're gonna try them out so you can see. Here at the pet store, I wanna show you a different variety of colors that are available. There are prong collars, choke, retractable leashes, harnesses, head halters, and there are a lot of things here that I'm not even going to try because tools used to help your dog should not be dangerous to you or them, uncomfortable to you or them, or just plain ineffective. And one of the things I really dislike are retractable leashes. That's a very dangerous thing to put on any dog and has caused a lot of injuries to both people and dogs. The nice thing about going to the pet store is you can pull out your head harness that you want to try out of the packaging and try it on there to make sure you have a good fit. See the one I tried on right there was far too small and now I'm walking her around the store with it on for a little bit to see if it is indeed a good fit. This one's a little too loose for me and we're going to address that later. I also want to show you what dogs do the very first time cool. that they ever try on a head harness. She's going to try to get it off. And depending on how stubborn and how smart your dog is, they will try longer or a shorter period of time until they get used to it. It's just like wearing a hat or a ring for the first time. You really notice that it's there for a while until it just becomes that's part of you. This is the first tool we're going to be trying. It's called the Wonder Walker. And I love the padding on this. This is so nice. Slip it over your head. And the color part goes on top of the dog. Up, 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 up. Good girl. Good girl. You're doing so great. Yes, you are. And this is a front pull harness. Sit. So this will clip right here to the very front. Now the theory behind the Wonder Walker is when she pulls, it's going to put resistance. It's going to put resistance right here, right across her shoulders. If this is fitted correctly. Yeah, it's a little bit loose, so I'm going to have to adjust that a little bit more. So when she pulls, it's going to put resistance there. So as I'm tugging here, you can see it's a little bit of tightness there. Tugging on this side, it tightens there. And when a dog has pressure put right here, instinctually, they're going to want to back up out of it, which is great if they've been trying to get ahead. Now they're coming back towards you. 
I'm a good girl. You're not going to do it in here, are you? You're just going to stare at me like I'm crazy. You know how cute you are. Are you beautiful? Are you a good girl? <laughs> Very good. Sit. Good girl. Oh, kisses. Thank you. Because I just put lotion. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Stop it with that tongue. Stop it. No. Good thing I brush your teeth. This is the thing I didn't do that I want to show you for proper fit. Okay, so you've got the colored side that goes on top, and the side goes right here. There is um, a step-by-step -step fitting guide, and I'll put the link for that below, that this company did themselves. This buckle goes right above the collarbone, where you can feel it there, and this in the back is what you want to tighten first. And that's pretty much the rule when tightening anything, getting it perfectly adjusted for your dog, is there's always going to be one strap that you need to do first before you do the other ones for proper fit. We having a sit down strike? Ooh. Okay, up. And I noticed that I got, <sighs> mine was um, specialized with this neoprene padding here. They don't all come with this. Anyway, like I was saying, my previous dog was also a pit bull breed and she had extremely sensitive skin, just like this little girl. The ones with more white fur just seem to be that way, either that or they're like me. I'm Irish and fair skinned, so anything that irritates my skin, you can see it right away. Come here. Come here, bugaboo. All right. Okay. So the first thing I did was I cinched this all the way. So she is just barely fitting into this size. She could probably fit into the size smaller. Then I would adjust this one if needed to get this right above the collarbone, which is where it is. And that way her legs can move freely while she's walking. I know that she can get full range of motion and she's not hindered there. And then you can adjust this for a good fit. After the other two have been fitted, then you can adjust this. You want the bottom strap to be snug, so, but you still want to be able to get a hand through it so that you know it's loose enough so it's not chafing on her when she's walking. And if you can get these neoprene pads, I highly recommend those um, for any dogs with short fur or ball patches down here or sensitive skin. Since I purchased Halties back in the day, which is over 10 years ago, they have changed the design. Finally, 
The most important part is the nose strap here. I really wanted to see some padding, and there is, and it almost looks like that neoprene um, texture to it again. When she wears this, because it used to just be the nylon strap right on their noses. So shorter hair dogs, especially the sensitive skin ones, it would start to break, wear away and break at that hair. Just like if you wore a headband in the same place that was really tight every day, it would start to break your hairs right there or anything wearing on your head will wear the hair away. Problem with that was not only ball patches, but my dogs would also get ingrown hairs which is no fun at all, and having to get that cleaned out, and they couldn't wear their halties at all while that was healing. And that's when I learned to put padding on mine. So I was sewing fleece on back then, and if this isn't soft enough still, I will put an extra strip of fleece on here later. So, how this works, as I showed you in the pet store, is this is the buckle behind the ears, there is an inherent problem with these. They look, to me, because I love horses, they look to me like the sweetest little head halter for a horse. And this is what it is. It's a head halter. People who don't understand this and aren't familiar with horses and dogs think that it's a muzzle. So I will address that issue in another video yet to come. I'm going to do that in a unique way. Anyway, come here, baby. Come here. Were really upset with me right now. Here, let me take this off. For those of you that don't know, sit. Pitbull breeds are incredibly emotional dogs. That's why they're such good cuddlers and they're so very loyal and loving. Um, They are so emotional. Look at you pouting. I'm gonna cheer her up. And show you also how to put a halty on for a dog that's just learning. Sit. Good girl. So I've got my treat and I have my head halter. She's gonna have to help me put it on herself and this is really gonna help me later on. You don't wanna chase your dog everywhere and try to get this on them. There you go, good girl. So it's an instant reward for putting her head in, and she can think about that while I'm putting this on without having to think solely about the head halter and how sad that she is that I'm putting a contraption on her. Sit. Okay, so this is the size three. If they made a size two and a half, it would fit her perfectly, so I am going to have to adjust this and secure it into place. Back here, just like the other one, there's always gonna be one strap that you tighten first, and this is it. This one back here. Tightening this as much as it'll go, it's still too loose on her. I want this very snug. So, what I will eventually do is get it to where it's very snug, take this extra piece of material, and stitch it down so it stays. So, think of it like an unruly bra strap. That's what you do there. You would stitch it in place and make that thing stay. And then this needs to be loose enough for her to be able to open up her mouth all the way. Oh, good girl, yeah. Because she's gonna be panting, drinking water, she might eat a treat or two, barking, yawning, and she needs full range of motion to do that. The only time there should be any pressure on her muzzle is if she's pulling. So a good dog that is walking next to me in a heel will have no pressure there at all. Um, she will be the only one to put the pressure there. So there we go. It fits very snugly right there, loose there. And when it has a proper fit, even if they go into the craziest of contortions, throwing themselves on the ground, pawing at their head halter, it shouldn't come off. But there are times when it could. A dog can whip their head just so or get their paw up just right, and there are some really smart ones out there. And that's why we have this safety piece right there. So she's still gonna wear her dog collar. This is going to attach the dog collar and her leash is gonna secure right here. That way if she gets this head halter off, I've still caught her by the collar. Aren't you beautiful? You're like a little pony. Yes you are, you're like a cute little pony. All right, 
may take it off. <gasps> wow! Freedom! Okay, like I said, stay tuned for the video on how I'm going to make this truly look like a head halter for a little, uh, a beautiful little pony. When it's all said and done, at the end of the day, nothing replaces training, absolutely nothing. So you can have all the fancy tools that you want and they're still going to fail you in the end if you don't have a well-trained dog. Come here. Come here. Down. What are you eating? A weed. Okay, you can have that. <laughs> and that's what I mean. It, she came right away when I asked her to, almost right away. There was a little hesitation there. She laid down when I asked her to, and she let me open up her mouth and investigate what was inside. And that is the good training I'm talking about that makes dogs a pleasure to have as a family member, a safe and wonderful family member to have around children. So definitely keep up on that training. I'm talking to myself as well here. My video ended abruptly here, but I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching this. Please comment below if you have any questions or comments for me, and I'll see you again soon.